This episode of the Wedding Film School Show is brought to you by Musicbed, the best music licensing platform for wedding filmmakers. Head over to themusicbed.com and enter our code WFS on checkout to get a free month on your annual wedding subscription. Now, on to the show. I wonder how many people are like running multiple businesses alongside their creative endeavor. You know, if you're starting a wedding filmmaking business, you are entrepreneurial in some way, shape or form. You know, you are a wedding filmmaker maybe for a while and you say, oh, you know what's a really good idea? This type of business. You know what I like about having multiple businesses is like the synergy that you get between them. It actually reduces your cost. It's, you can run way more efficiently if you are running, you know, eight businesses that share some similarities. It takes the pressure off of the other parts of your business that are doing really well. Definitely. It gives profit back to those businesses. When we yeah. need something, we buy it. Even just the fun side of running a business, which is making your business more successful, investing back in it. It allows that to be much more um, attainable when one thing can have a down year and the other thing can pick up the slack. Hey guys, welcome to the Wedding Film School Show. We are here in season three, and today it's not me and Jared, but today it's Bobby Burns and I. Um, how you doing, Bobby? Hello. Uh, I am doing great. I am excited to be back on the show. Uh, this is, well, if they're in order, this will be my second appearance on this season alone. It might be a new world record, uh, but yeah, I'm excited. Yeah, good, it's one of those good, good stuff in store. Yeah, you know, and if you don't know Bobby, which you should, it, but but Bobby's a filmmaker up in the Minneapolis area, and he owns a company called Redmond Digital Media. Um, Correct. And today we're going to be talking about kind of a subject I think in wedding filmmaking and just in the creative industry in general. Like, I wonder how many people are like doing what we're talking about today, which is running multiple businesses, maybe alongside their creative endeavor. Yep. And and to clarify, I think, Jay, I was thinking about this before. Multiple businesses can mean a lot of things. Yes. So, I, you know, I think multiple businesses could be uh, like, so again, my company is Redmond Digital Media. Uh, so it could be that and Wedding Film School. I mean, to me, that's two separate well, And businesses. it could be multiple businesses or multiple lines. Like not, maybe they're yeah, not Yeah, I was going to say similarly, like you guys have Huxley and you have Merriman and you have Stop, Go, Love. And those are all wedding filmmaking brands. And I know they are all kind of well, I also know, operate under a similar umbrella. but Pixel Press Media which is our web design yep. firm. I also own, yep. I have a parent company called High Sales Media, which we don't really use much anymore, but it, it's where we do our corporate yep. work under. And For then sure. I also own a company that we're starting. Well, I own Outpost Studios, yep. which is our outsourcing studio. And then we're launching Luma Sites, which is a wedding filmmaking, probably be a subsidiary under Pixel Press, but it's a wedding filmmaking yeah, yeah. centered um, web design like templated so, designs and whatnot and, yeah so it's like and, and but it doesn't have to be that it doesn't have to be on no creative. it of could be that you own that like too. a dry cleaning company and a wedding filmmaking something company. totally separate so i have another business that's totally separate it's not a creative endeavor or the final one that i think is also important jay to 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 call out what do you think about like Look, obviously it's unique in in owning multiple businesses. That's kind of its own thing. But I also think there are definitely some correlations and some some lines that we can draw some similarities between you know, a lot of these a lot of people are working a full-time salary job and shooting weddings on the side. And I think mm -hmm. there's some correlation there. 100%. Too. It's not exactly the same, but Yeah, I yeah. think there's some differences. We could talk about maybe what are the differences between running multiple things, owning multiple things, having multiple lines of business and being bivocational yeah yep. um because i i'm technically still bivocational as well i have a position that's true i didn't even think about that i have I a position it, at a church I and i work basically full time there <laughs> it takes yeah. up a lot of my time and so i'm kind of good at multitasking i'm also pretty informed on the pluses and minuses of this lifestyle so i figured let's talk sure. about it a little bit in some of the pluses and minuses. And I think like the first thing I was gonna think through, Bobby, is like, you know, I wonder how many people in the wedding filmmaking industry are, I mean, I know most people are not full time, right? Yeah. I'm, I'm not sure the total numbers on that, but I think it's an overwhelming majority of people. I wonder how many of them though own 
or operate multiple lines of business or multiple different companies? I wonder if that's like common. Yeah, I don't, I don't know. Like, so you're talking about somebody who's full time and own something else, or maybe they're full time in their other thing in, in owning their other thing in weddings they're building up. Part of me thinks it's more common than what we think. Um, you know, if you're starting a wedding filmmaking business, you are entrepreneurial in some way, shape or form. And a lot of times I think those those desires of, of being entrepreneurial bleed out into other things. And you know, you are a wedding filmmaker maybe for a while, and then you say, oh, you know what's a really good idea? This type of business. Or you know what I can do better? This. Okay. Or you know what product the world needs? This. You're entrepreneurial, right, Bobby? Have you yes. tried any things that have been failed businesses? Have you had any failed businesses? Um, I don't think so. Oh, man. And I think part of that is I'm like hyper, hyper uh, critical and hyper safe. Like I play everything so, so safe, like too, like detrimentally safe. <laughs> I would say I, I'm not safe really, but I, but I am like thoughtful. Yeah. <laughs> so I don't like, I haven't like, let me think. I bought a printing um, press thingy, like a large format printer like and a laminator, printing? like okay. a giant, like, 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 like a, 10 foot wide laminator or because I, I was like, Oh, well, let's get into print. I, Cause I like print. I like sign making. Yeah. Like it's something I'm, I'm yeah. very, I love, but I, I couldn't sell it, but I bought this <laughs> big printer. <right? laughs> Sorry. Yeah. It's in the back still in our studio, yeah. this gigantic printer. Right. <laughs> the, so anyway, if you guys need a sign, made, if you need a, uh, no, if you want to <laughs> buy a large format printer, yeah, I will yeah, there we go. basically give it to you. But, um, <laughs> this this guy so i buy it right from a person i knew and they're like oh yeah we gotta go give me this money for this and then like you know <laughs> come and pick it up because my business partner who was working with me he just lost his mind and he went crazy and i was like okay well, i mean is, i'll buy what does that mean? yeah yeah I'll so buy red this. flag number one yeah they went crazy they caused all these issues but like the person let us into the building and everything seemed fine i buy this thing Literally, I'm I'm getting the I'm getting the sense that maybe this was just stolen. Is that? Is that well, what I get a call like 18 months later, and this it's from a lawyer, and they're okay. like, "That wasn't yours to buy. This person sold it to you illegally." Like, I was like, problem? I don't know. "Bro, dude, literally, I bought it from the financing company. I did not know the I like they told us they would sell it to us because he wouldn't pay. I I don't know, like weird." So that like, but I haven't made a dollar off that. And it was like $10,000 of investments. I almost bought a cotton candy company at one Interesting. point. Interesting. Yeah. Cause they're in the wedding. Cause industry. that just falls right in line with all your other creative endeavors. Well, they're in the wedding industry. True. Um, I you know what I also the own candy. that I never ever talk about. We own a photo booth company. Oh yeah. So we do photo. Booth. How's that? Uh, you do them often. Would you call that, would you call that a success or a failure at this point? We probably do 60 events a year. That's a success. Um, I kind of hate it. It, it. It's a pain. Yeah. Like yeah. it's, but you know, I, I, I'm not totally certain. Yeah. It could be a lot more successful. And, and so this is kind of what we're going to get into. I know yeah. for a fact it could be more successful if I gave it more time. Yeah. Well, you know, time becomes like the ultimate, I mean, time, time is money. We also, we always say that, whatever, but like time becomes like your benchmark of, of value and like your greatest commodity. And I think like as, as humans, we already kind of know that. And especially as we get older, I think that comes more into play, but even uh, in other senses, like in entrepreneurship, uh, that time is so valuable. And Jay and I were kind of talking about this where it's like, um, I mean, I don't know how Jay does it. Jay has like 12 different businesses. I have like three. Um, and, and look, when you start businesses, it makes a lot of other aspects of starting new businesses easier, I would say. Well, that, that's, that's typically what I try to do is find things that complement, uh, like, like for instance, yeah. the cotton candy company, I knew them from the wedding industry. Yep. And, then and they, they were... can play off of each other mm -hmm. and, you know, maybe the, some of the startup stuff or buying it and transitioning it, making the changes. You've already done it with other businesses. So, like, 
there is some of that, but at the same time, like you only have so much time. And I think that's what I always run into of like, there have been like there, I've had a couple like, man, I, I wish I could remember what they were. I always have these like random like product ideas where I'm like, oh, this would be cool. Like what if filmmakers would like this? But A, I've never manufactured anything. Uh, and B, wedding film school should. Time. Wedding film school yeah. should. We talked about that a long time ago. Didn't we talk about a... Uh, I got a bag I want to make. I, I, is it, I don't want to give it away, but is it is it a, is it a, a Pelican case that we talked about? No, no, no. Not time? that one. A different one. Okay. But but okay. but I, I got a bag I want to make. You where where I'll just say it because no one's gonna make this and probably isn't that useful. <laughs> and if you do, thank you. I would like a some kind of like sling or mm -hmm. or something that would carry like three lenses on it and holster your gimbal. Ooh, I like it. Because like when you're walking also gimbals are so much more like durable these days i would say like, like if you could like slip like one of those yeah. like, gimbal thing into one of those bags and walk with it on your side and then kind of holster it like a gimbal holster dude we could do that yeah that's a good idea what if we make a universal gimbal holster? yeah it has to be universal it has All to right, be guys, the podcast is done uh <laughs> we're gonna go start another business and <laughs> thanks for it'd be a wedding here. film school brand and yeah like you know i'll call them, it could be them. in the shape of the wedding film school logo somehow. yes that yeah cool. it'll, it actually will be red it'll yeah. be a red bag that you bring to work i like it i like it <laughs> uh we're getting someone with this we'll chat more after after the podcast no but, but it, yeah no all kinds of random ideas that yeah i'm with you like you just have and you're like oh, that'll be awesome yeah and then you don't have time <laughs> yeah i don't have time i don't want to put the money into it I don't know that it would succeed. Well, why don't you tell everybody, Bobby, easier. what do you well, tell them about your other lines of business? Just because we kind of talked around that, but yeah. So my main, you know, whatever we'll call it, main thing, Redmond Digital Media, doing wedding films. We do some commercial work as well. Wedding Film School, uh, you know, um, uh, part owner of this, along with Jay and Jared, uh, creating content for you guys. And then my non-wedding creative related one, um, I own a um, a place called The Wilderness. Um, it's here in Minneapolis. It is a uh, co-working space with a, you know, let's call it a, a fitness or well-being concept kind of worked into it. So we own, uh, it's like 18,000 square feet um, co-working. So people can come in, they can, uh, you know, have an open desk membership where they sit wherever they want. They can have a dedicated desk membership where they have the same desk every time they come in. It's they can leave stuff there. It's only their space. And we also have private offices. Um, but yeah, so like you, one of the things that we do differently, like there's lots of great co-working spaces, you know, local places, big places like WeWork, whatever. Um, we're a lot less like corporate feeling. And we have a gym, like we want it to feel like you're outdoors. So we have, uh, I mean, it's turf, but we have grass running right through the middle. We have... Um, you know, ropes and rings and things to swing from and climb on. And we pull from a lot of different things. Uh, you know, I'm, I'm not on here that often. So for those who don't know, uh, myself and the other founder of that business, uh, my business partner, we met competing on and training for American Ninja Warrior. Um, so we pull from that, we pull from rock climbing, we pull from traditional cardio and free weights and stuff like that. So basically just encouraging people to not sit for eight hours a day, get their body moving. Um, it doesn't have to be anything extreme or hard or dangerous, but uh, moving around. And then we also have an event space worked into that too. So we have a speakeasy, a theater, kind of a lounge area. Game Seems like it would be a great like place for all down. these out of shape wedding filmmaker editors to just be standing on a channel. Man, editing. plop down, you know, 200 bucks a month, sit where you want and uh, edit from the space and uh, get up when you have hit a roadblock walk around on some balance beams, swing from some rings. And then go to Bobby, flowing. find him in the studio and say, can you yeah. review this film for me? And he will do all live film live, takes for live anyone who joins before, the wilderness. Yeah, yeah there you go. <laughs> uh, but yeah, so that's my other business. We are, um, you know, it was probably about two years in the making. Um, and then we are, we are just coming up on our one year anniversary of opening our Congratulations. doors. Congratulations. Thank you. Thank you. So... I think the um, the main reason people are starting other businesses, right, is money. They want more money. I think the secondary reason. Yeah, I think was ultimately they have good ideas and they want inspiration. But like money and like making money is probably probably one of the number one reasons they want to have diverse For income sure. streams. So I think we should talk a little bit. Okay, 
talk about the perks. And then I yeah. think we should talk about some of the <laughs> very big non perks. And then I think we should kind of land on like, you know, if you're considering being multivocational, bivocational in, in it's particularly in a way that you own the other business. Yeah. Because what's weird about owning, like if you work at another thing, right. It's like you, that takes your time, but it doesn't all the time take your brain. Yes. Your that is a great way to put it. I would say even shooting a wedding, like, like it's like I shoot the wedding and then I'm, it's out of my life. Like mm. the business itself, the entity now becomes like, like, Bobby, you don't have kids. I have a child, another one on the way. The best way I can describe it for you, Bobby, is like the way that you think about someone that you love, the, yep. the anxieties, the fears, the, yeah. the, the like, like my wife is pregnant now. Right. And so every time she moves at night, I wake up. <laughs> Are you okay? That, I'm worried. Right. And it's yeah, like the anxiety. Yeah. That's what it's like to own a business. And so we'll talk about I think, that. Yeah, again, I don't know that exact reference, obviously, but like I feel what you're saying for sure. Yes, it's very similar. I would say like you yeah. you don't now you just know what it's like in some ways. Yeah. Like well, way, I'm, I'm prepared. The way to be it becomes like a child. Yeah. Like it really well, does. It's, like, it's it's always on your mind. Mm -hmm. Like mm -hmm. always. And, and it can always you're... threaten you. That's why they call it limited liability corporation. <laughs> Like a LLC for, so I just blew someone's mind, Bobby. They didn't know if that's what that stand is for. There but, you go. But an LLC is like information. the idea that why would I need to limit my liability? Mm. Because a business can like, it can actually crush you. Yeah. And, and so I think there's some negatives, but there are some positives. So why don't we talk about that first? So for you, Bobby, like what, what are some of the good things you found about in maybe ways that this has helped you maybe creatively, obviously, hopefully financially, but what are some things yeah. you like about having multiple things that you're doing? Yeah. Yeah. So first and foremost, I mean, obviously look, let's not beat around the bush. Uh, I am included with Jay and in saying that like the financially, uh, that is a lot of the motivation for starting a new business. Cause it is a lot of work. Uh, different types of businesses will range, but usually it is a lot of work to see any money from that. Right. Um, and so, but that is ultimately what you want. And then, you know, for me, Jay, you kind of touched on this. I really, and I think this is something that's underrated. I know you agree with me. I think a lot of people, you said that people like having multiple income streams. And I, I think people do like that, but I don't think people set out to start a new business for that specific reason a lot of times, but I do like that is going into it. I am like, I want to not have all my eggs in one basket. And part of it is kind of what we're seeing. This is a whole nother topic, but what we're seeing right now with the wedding industry, 2023, probably whether it's a down year or a kind of market correction based off of last year, like a lot of people are hurting and I'm, I'll be fine. I think that's what we talked about in my last episode on the podcast, which is maybe re probably released by the time that this releases, but like, I'll be fine overall. But like, I'm feeling that too. Like I'm not fully booked and I don't expect to be this year. So having other revenue streams is really important for me um, in to complement the type of business that I'm running. And then lastly, the big thing that comes to mind for me is like, look, my mind is constantly working. I don't really get a day off, right? Like there are plenty of days where I don't work, but my mind is still focused on it. And we'll talk about that in the negatives. But I am allowed a lot of freedom. I'm allowed a lot of freedom in how I want to live my life, how I want to spend my time. Um, and being a business owner and a multi-business owner has allowed me, especially over the years, to really change. Really, I changed my mindset on a lot of that. I started to shift to really only wanting to, you know, to really wanting to focus on projects that bring me some kind of personal joy and fulfillment and things that I like doing. And then to say, look, I've worked really hard at building this business. At the time, it was just the Redmond Digital Media. Um, and I kind of wanted to like cap it and just say, I want to make sure I still love this. And I want to, and that might be different like I than a lot of people. Um, and I said, I want to make sure that I'm enjoying my life and I want to prioritize feeling healthy and feeling good and, um, and so having other businesses has allowed me to also 
lean into that a little bit more. You know what I like about having multiple businesses is like the synergy that you get between them. Yeah. You know, it actually reduces your cost. Yeah. it's You can run way more efficiently if you are running, you know, eight businesses that share some similarities and owning a web design firm and having employees and team members who do that allows me to start a business very easily. Easily. Yeah. Cause I have, you have an idea and 72 hours later you can have a website. Yes. Um, having experience there, I've obviously like I have experience. So yeah, there's let me, a, let me rephrase 72 hours later, you can have a good website. Yes. Yeah. Well, the <laughs> thing about it is, is I, I like, I don't want to tell you like, oh, just start a web design firm. It's like, well, you have to be good at it too. <laughs> like, yeah, you can't but, just say, I know a business. But regardless, the now there's going to be something in your life. Like, okay, you start a business, right? That's a brick and mortar store. And like, you have, maybe haven't done this, Bobby, but say you said like, hey, listen, we're going to start this business. My only caveat is I need 500 square feet in the back from my studio. Yeah. You could do that. You could have a yeah. space that is yours that you work out of that you totally like, like, and like that's, and you could set your own rate cause you're renting to yourself. Yep. And so yeah. Like, you can even get, yeah, you can get financially savvy. You can it. give you a, a sweet deal. Like, like yeah. I have my editing studio and I pay my editing studio a good rate for me. Yep. To, you know? And so, you know, I know I'm helping support that employee and I'm also, you know, we're scratching each other's backs. Like For sure. these things are the more you, if you are building a systems and, and kind of your own business empire, we talked about that in the other episode of Total Media. I was just going to say, could, could we call it maybe a dynasty? You could call it an empire or a dynasty, <laughs> sure. But if you build your own like world to complement yeah. itself, I think that's great. And I, I, you know, like photo booth is great. Like for, yeah, I was gonna say there's kind of the flip side of that. We talked about kind of the back end, but on the front end of the actual service itself, especially with you, a lot of your there's a lot of synergy be between your businesses where you have, uh, uh, I mean, first of all, you have multiple tiers of wedding filmmaking, so there's kind of referrals available. So if you get a referral from somebody that's a solid lead, but it's like, oh shoot, no, yeah, we don't have ten thousand for Huxley. I'm sorry for wasting your time. You can say, oh well. Here's my other company, Stop Go Love. Check out their work. Yes. Uh, plus, you have the ability to say, "Oh, did you guys need a photo booth? Did you need cotton candy? Which you know you didn't end up buying it. Whatever. Do you need a sign printed for your wedding? Uh, but all that stuff where you can kind of like it. it it's we we'll do you something have the like resources to reach out or to send people else a couple of books of wedding film. Us. Right? We do something like a couple yep. books of wedding film, and then we don't always do this. Sometimes we're like, Hey, I don't want to like, we're, we're not trying to push the volume yeah. there, but say I'm like, Hey, I want to yeah. generate some revenue and mm -hmm. I'm a little low on my sales for my photo booth. We might send an email to all our couples say, Hey, yep. here's a hundred dollars off. Yeah. Cause I know I'm going to be there already. Yeah. And so I might just as got, well just, we, I mean, I'll say we'll pick up 10, 20 K. Oh, totally. On some of those, those complimentary sales. And like, I wouldn't call that a you this is the thing to think it's a subsidiary it's technically the yep. same company but it really could be its own company because yep. it has its own website it has its own team of people has its own equipment um now we what we share is office space storage space and internet access you know and so there's there's yep. there's like there's some differences but i would say like you know i think it's a big perk to be able to just Use money I've already made, clients I've already acquired to yep. generate more revenue. Now, that's not the case for all businesses. Like with our web design, like, you know, there's nothing I could do to make money with web design. Yeah. With my wedding hey, do you guys clients. need a wedding website? We could do that, but I'm like, it <laughs> just doesn't, not worth it, doesn't yeah. feel right to me, you know? Yeah. And so like, that's different. And like, it doesn't always work out. But what is great is like when I buy great hosting, Yep. For my clients, I get great hosting. For sure. So we are sharing, and I, I think that's one benefit. I think the other one is obviously the money, right? Like, yeah. I was thinking about it the other day, and like the little things that we sell, I, I might, there are times where I'm like, I have little lines in my business that are generating like 40, 50K, and I view that as kind of a failure. I'm like, mm. that sucks. Right? I think it would depend what it is. 
Yeah, I mean, to me, it's just like anything that's not generating six figures. Do you think some of that though is that it's comparative? Sure, sure, but it's like it's it. Well, it's really just my time. Yeah. Versus like the time it would take to make it a six figure business. I'm like, oh yeah, I was gonna say yeah. It's like I don't know if I really want to do it, so it's a little frustrating to me. But that being said, when you look at it, you're like, okay, like I literally gave that almost no time. Mm-hmm. And I, I was able to generate 40, 50 K. Yeah. You know, and like, but don't you think that you were able to, to do that and to, to, to accomplish that while giving it next to no time because of the synergies within your other businesses, your experience having started and ran other businesses. Like, yes. I like, yes. like, okay, let's say you're like, Oh, it's the podcast, the podcast. Let's say it's making 40 K. And you're I wish. Like, ah. Yeah, I wish too. Uh, and you're like, ah, it's a failure, but like, you know, it's very little work to have gotten there. But I would say, like, if somebody was starting from nothing with no experience, it would be a lot more work. To well, get there. yes, and, and that's part of it. But I would say the positive is like, uh, what I was getting at was like, as much as I look at that and go, oh, that's a failure. Like, when you really start thinking about it, it's like, okay, well, that's a whole employee for me, basically. Yep. Like, so, you know, it's not as successful as I want it to be, but it's just like, it takes the pressure off of the other parts of your business that are doing really well. It gives profit back to those businesses. It gives it the ability to like, when we need something, we buy it. Yep. Right. Because we have all these things that are padding our income. Right. And it's like, totally. I think creating a part of your own business, as an entrepreneur, more things that give you the ability. Cause you know, there's retirement, there's savings, there's all the responsible, boring parts about money, yeah. which is fine. We can talk about that, but even just the fun side of running a business, which is making your business more successful, investing back yeah, in, seeing taking that money and doing fun things with your money, going on vacation, like like the, the fun parts about money, like, yeah it allows that to be much more um, attainable when one thing can have a down year and the other thing can pick up the slack. Yep, definitely. Well, I think basically, uh, you know, the, the, what that essentially goes back to is just, yeah, not the multiple streams and not having all your eggs in one basket. And uh, there's, there's some distinct benefits to that for sure. For sure. So um, I would say the other positive that I see in a really clear way is like, you know how like people get burnt out? Yeah. And and I think a lot of people are like, I'm overworked. And I really am like, no, you're bored. You're in a rut. How about you're not overworked, you are over work. Yes. You're just past it. You're mentally don't care about it. Or like, you you know, there's this concept in the Bible, right? where they, they, they talk about um, every seven years, which this is very socialist of them, but they say there's a year of Jubilee, right? And everyone who had mm. any debt, it's washed away, mm. right? And so like that was how the Jews did it in the olden days. They would also say, you rotate your crops, right? They say, oh, you let the fields go fallow. You don't plant any crops in this field for a season. You never plant okay. the same crop twice too. So you're constantly rotating your fields, which is still a farming concept today, right? It's like every area where you're planting seeds, everything that you're creating needs a break just so that you can, yeah, I can get behind that just so you can plant the same seeds later. Breath of fresh air. Yeah. You just need like a little bit of a change of scenery. And and a lot of people I think take this too far. They're like, I'm going to stop. Yeah. It's like, no, you just need to shift gears. A lot of times, like you just work on something else for a month and you come back to that thing you were working on or even a week or a couple of days and you come back and you feel, you know, your brain is kind of like chewed on the situation a little, you've thought about it. And then you sit back in that edit. Cause what a lot of people do is it's like, you're done with the edit. You can't do any better until you get a breakthrough. Just do yeah. something more productive with your time. Yeah. I think there's a lot of truth to that. I think it is especially true in a creative industry or a creative endeavor or something like that. I think when you're stretched cre- creatively, or you're burnt out creatively, it that feels a lot different than you know what's compared to just a, I don't know, a sales job or whatever, right? Um, and I agree. I think being able to step away, like I'm a big proponent of I am going to edit 
or if I really don't want to edit, I'm not going to edit. Um, but the flip side of that is when I'm like, okay, yeah, I'm like, I'm, I'm in the zone. I'll edit for 12 hours. Like yeah. I just won't eat. I won't eat. I won't you have, leave my, you have clarity yeah. on what you're doing and it feels good to do it. And, and you know, having and I another... need those breaks. I need those in-betweens where I'm just like, oh yeah, I'm not editing. But as we mentioned before, my mind is always on my businesses and I'm definitely not, not working. Well, that's a good editing. thing. And I think that's being portrayed as a negative with people where they're like, you need to stop mm. working. And it's like, no, you need to stop working on things that are not productive. Yeah. And no one is like, go do your accounting for the month. You know why people become workaholics, Bobby? Why? Cause they're good at work. Oh, have you ever met a workaholic who <laughs> sucks at work? No, they're all good. Probably. And they're, yeah. they're the reason they like doing it is because every time they do it, they feel good. And get so some, get that dopamine. Trip yeah, it's a high. And so it's you like hit a not, new, you hit a new standard. You hit a new, you know, I made this much. I, I raised this or I brought in this many new clients. And yeah, you're getting those all that's good. So you're solving drips. problems. You're making, you're yeah. creating more order in the world. You are doing something productive with your time. And I think a lot of people who are creatives are burnt out because if they were to really be realistic, like if you're doing 20 weddings, let's be honest, what is that? One hour in sales, 20 hours. Max, maybe mm -hmm. two hours. We'll even give them 48 hours of sales, 60 hours of sales and client management, 80. I'll yeah. give them 80 hours out of 25 weddings that they're spending. That's four weeks of work. You got 54, 52 more to fill up, right? Yeah. So you got 48 hours. So let's give them 10 hours per wedding film. That's 250. What, let, what is that like? You know, six weeks of work, okay? You got 10 weeks out of 52 taken up. You got another... 40 weeks left or 42 weeks Yeah. out of that. You got editing. Let's imagine you did one per week, which is reasonable. 20 more weeks, right? Like 25 yep. more weeks. You have like, yeah, like 20 extra weeks on your year. And so many people, that's all they do. They, th what mm -hmm. I just told you, they're going to tell you they're overworked. And I'm like, no, you're just inefficient and you're in a rut and you need to do something to break up the monotony of it to keep you Yeah, that sizzling. inefficiency, I think, is the dangerous part. Because I, I think that you feel overworked because you're spending, instead of spending, you know, two hours finding uh, music and six hours editing or whatever, you're spending eight hours sitting on just the intro to your film, questioning it over and over and over and over. And your, I don't know. Your brain knows that you should be doing something productive with your time. Yep. And you can't freaking hijack that. Well, you can't force it to do the thing that you like should be doing necessarily. But either, you can't why force, you, can't you, you can't force it to not be, sometimes. you can't force your brain to not be dissatisfied with being unproductive. It will yeah. always feel that way. Like, and I yeah. don't mean like, Cause, cause people are like, oh, well you, you think I should be working? No. You know, what's very productive rest. Yeah. Rest is productive. Everything you love doing is productive. It's producing. You know what else is important? Community. Community is productive. People. People are productive. Every one of them is producing something that you need as a mm -hmm. human being to thrive. Right. Mm -hmm. And so like, I, I don't think you should be taking 20 weeks off. Maybe that's fine for you, whatever. But I think a lot of people, they're like, oh, I need to do less because I'm so burnt out. And I'm like, no, maybe you should start another business. Yeah. Maybe you should do something that lets you break up the monotony of running a wedding filmmaking business and just only doing that. It could be great, you know? And yeah. I think it's just an, un there's the money side, but I also think it makes your, it actually can make you have better films. Yeah, I think it can allow you to, yeah, like we said, kind of focus your brain elsewhere when you need to and allow it that it's it's not overall rest. It's just rest off of being creative sometimes. Rest off of editing a wedding sometimes. Gives you a and break. And then you come back and you're like, you're amped and you have all these ideas and you it, it falls in place and it, it just starts to work. You're ready to rock. And I yes. love that. And I think I've seen that over and over again is like, why, people are like, why are you excited about all this stuff still? I'm like, I'm excited because I barely work on any of it. Yeah. <laughs> like I'm popping. Well, in. that's I what, get, so I, it's exciting. I, I kind of mentioned this, like I'm intentional with what, like I just know the amount of wedding films that I can handle in roughly a year where I can still, because my main goal is to always be excited and to always enjoy it. 
And I know where I start to say, I am not liking this anymore. Like this is becoming too much stress, too much pressure, pressure for me. Um, and yeah, so that was, you know, it was very much an intentional decision because yeah, I want to still like it. And I know the, the, the rest that my brain needs and it's not rest specifically. It's just, that's why I have the other business. Well, and it's not I'll, like I'll a childish, immature, like kind of like, and I don't want to say childish, but you know, like there's a, like a little bit of a, well, you know, an entitled kind of view that you shouldn't be stressed or you shouldn't have to do anything yeah, boring. Like a, or, yeah, yeah, yeah. Like work is boring a lot of times. Yeah, and don't worry. I still have plenty of stress. So yes, yes, yes. <laughs> but it is like in it's order different. to- It's different categories and it, it doesn't pile up the same way. I want to live on fire, man. I want to be on fire. I want to like go my life and do as much as I can because I only have one life to live. And I want my That's life- true to be beautiful. I want it to produce value for the world. I want to give my kids something. I want to mm. create some things of value. You know, there's a book I read and they talk about immortality projects. And I, and it's like, that's just a desire people have like innately to do something that's beyond them that lasts. Yeah. That lasts beyond their lifetime. Yeah. And I think it's like, so I don't have a problem, like just going in and, and, and like, I went to a concert last night. I went to a vacation yep. for two days. We just on, a, on pr impromptu, literally on Monday. Yep. I was like, "Oh, this comedian's I in want town." To be gone. Me and my wife just went and we hung out. Like, I have, I feel like I have. I was in Tokyo for ten or six days. Like, I yeah. feel like I, I don't really have a lot of sympathy. I guess for people who are always like, you know, blah blah blah, work life balance. I'm like, uh, do you want to do more fun stuff than I get to do? And I have all yeah. these other things going on in my life. And I'm, I, I just can't understand what the problem is. And what I end up finding out is like the work that they're doing currently, they resent. Mm. Well, and I think having multiple businesses and stuff requires a lot of intentionality. Mm -hmm. You have to be intentional with your time. You have to be intentional about your goals. You have to be intentional about the life that like basically where are the limits on how it impacts your life. Yep. Um, you it, it's a very it's a very dangerous scenario to get into if you aren't oh uh, and, and it's it's gotten me stuff. it's gotten me good so i think we should talk about that yeah what are like we've we've pumped this up we've made it seem like the only possible good thing and now we're going to tell you it's not <laughs> and yeah. tell you like there's a lot it's definitely a double-edged sword and you definitely want to tread carefully when it comes to multiple business what do you what have been for you like is this like kind of new for you? Was there something in your life before um, the wilderness or is this your first time like, um, doing? No, two I things? mean, wedding film school has been a handful of years, but definitely adding the wilderness added in, you know, a lot more, but I will say like, I know myself and actually I will say from the start, like, you know, so again, I have one main business partner and now we actually have a, 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 a third investor who just came on, um, who's also a good friend of mine. And do they want to invest in you, wedding film school? Uh, just as a, maybe, maybe anyway, <laughs> I don't know. Uh, but so like, you know, from the beginning, I think I did overestimate my the level of involvement that I could have and stuff like that. So I, I have I have kind of scaled that back and stuff like that intentionally because the intentionality was so important to me of like you have to be realistic. I think that's like I said, that's the dangerous that's the downside. You have to be realistic because it's so easy for it to take over your life. Any any business you have, even if I just had Redmond Digital Media or just had Wedding Film School or whatever, like it's very easy for for you to kind of get suffocated by one business or by one thing. Or one yeah, you have to, if you have multiple businesses, I always say this, the baby's got to eat. Yeah. And they're all going to be crying yep. in the nursery. And yep. you got to go in there and give them all a bottle. And if you don't, it's either going to keep crying or a baby's going to die. But yeah, like, exactly. That's, I mean, weird metaphor, Jay, but that's exactly <laughs> it, right? Where it's like, look, you, you, any one of those businesses, any business can take over your life in, in a variety of ways, shapes and forms and, or destroy your life, right? Destroy you financially, whatever. Um, but it can destroy personal relationships, like tons of stuff. Uh, but, um, you know, so if you have three businesses, 
or five businesses or whatever, that's just three times or five times more likely. Now we talked about there's some synergies and efficiencies that make that maybe it's maybe if you have five businesses, it's only four and a half times more likely. But the likelihood increases. And then I think the like maybe maybe smaller scale is like the time for me. The time thing is so hard. Having the motivation always uh, can be difficult, even if you are splitting your time well and being intentional with that. And I think what I find most is like, even with being intentional and wanting to make sure I enjoy everything that I'm involved in and doing the things that I love and outsourcing the things that I don't love, um, which I feel like we've done a podcast episode on you and I, Jay. Um, it's very easy for time to just get lost. Like I have so many small tasks. Ones that yesterday I don't was mind a total doing. waste of time for me. Yeah, I'll I'll just have days where I'm like, I'll like I'll have days where I'm like I'm not working today, and that's one of those freedoms that I am allotted, and I love that. But I have days where I'm like, yep, I'm I've got a full steam ahead. I got my coffee. I'm good to go. I got nothing till six o'clock. And then six o'clock rolls around and I haven't moved. And I'm like, wow, what did I even accomplish today? And I know I'm doing stuff all day. Like I'm doing these dumb little small tasks. And, uh, you know, my mind is always, always on. It's always working. And so I think those are the downsides for me. You know, I look at it and I was in a, um, when, you know, I think one of the negatives that happens is like, I was kind of mentioning like, you know, it is like children, right? And that like your time is no longer Mm -hmm. your own. And also random emergencies can happen at any given time. This Um, is true. I will say, I didn't mention this before because this is a wedding filmmaker podcast, believe it or not. (laughs) That is true. And um, wedding filmmaking is particularly um, conducive to a second line of business. Yeah. Um, Because it, it's seasonal. Most of it only happens on a Saturday and most other things happen Monday through Friday. Mm-hmm. Um, it, the things you buy, cameras, computers, the skills you learn, marketing, making videos, they enhance anything else you start. Yep. So They're essentially you, to other areas. you're a marketing arm of anything mm-hmm. you start. So that's that's a positive. So I think it is all the, all the negatives I'm about to say, wedding filmmaking is particularly conducive. Um, to helping live the lifestyle that I live. Um, that being said, I, the time is still not my own, right? Yeah. Like, like any random thing can happen any day. Like for instance, I have this one thing I'm supposed to be doing with the state of Illinois with taxes or something. Sounds fun. <laughs> that I don't know what I'm doing. Yeah. Like, like, like my, my, my CPA is like, you need to fill this thing out. I'm like, what? You're like, that's your job. You're and they're watch. like, no, only you can <laughs> do that. I'm wedding films. <laughs> only you can do that. And I'm like, huh? And I like, now yeah. I need to know about, I spent my day trying to figure out healthcare for my employees. I spent my it's day- It's a lot of putting little fires out. Yeah. And like- And those little fires, even if they're small, end up taking the whole day. And it sucks because it's like, I want to be making content for wedding filmmakers. I want to yeah. be- doing things that are, and here's what I will say, like as much as it does interrupt, the positive is you gotta be just patient and typically it'll work mm-hmm. itself out. Yep. The negative is everything takes forever now. <laughs> like, yeah, yeah. Like everything I wanna do, like, you know what I think the biggest thing I'm noticing a lot in my life, Bobby, is I actually have windows that close. Mm. I'm trying to use that language more now to say to people, I like if, that. Yeah. if you don't hit my window, you got to take another orbit around the atmosphere. Yeah. Like circle back. Yeah. And like, hopefully it works next time. But like, right now I'm on to the next thing. I got a two week window. If we don't get this mm-hmm. done, it's done. Yeah. I got a three, like I have certain windows of time. Like right now I'm doing, my goal is to do 30 podcasts mm. before yep. the end of, I would say April, but I really, in my heart, I'm saying March, but it's not going to happen, but, (laughs) (laughs) but I want to get them done because I want to be able to focus when my business, other part of my life starts picking up and I'm going to have a kid in June. So like, yeah, I guess that's pretty important. There's a lot of chaos that's about to happen. And so it's like, my time isn't my own is my point. Mm. Like I pretty much am like a farmer. Right, yeah. which when the winter comes, I do one thing. When the when the yeah, rain to, comes, I do another thing. It's not up to me anymore. And, 
and uh, you know, whatever. Yeah, for and all the, the freedom of, of seasonality and stuff. yeah, for all the freedom I've gained, I've lost a lot of freedom, and and I think like, do you think though that like, I don't disagree with you on that statement, but do you think that like, okay, you could be work like, that's just being a mature adult in some ways <laughs> yes like I would agree. like replace owning a business with working a salaried 40 hour job replace that with i don't know what i guess we're kind of just talking about work so that's the the best i would option. say replace that with with being a a day trader like that's not technically a business right well, like day no trader's what, crazy day trader's crazy but like yeah it's just like you're you're always going to be a you know in some way shape or form like a slave to like some thing out of your control i think yes but i think when it comes to the like the liability side of owning a business it's not the same like like yes that's true your so the pressure feels different Yep. It feels, definitely. um, cause, cause I would say like, well, it's on your shoulders success. Like if I'm working salaried 40 hours a week for a marketing agency as their in-house videographer, I mean, you can work I, a job and not give a crap about the job. Yeah. Like, I'm not going to say I don't care about them, but like, you could I, I, like, I don't really give a shit if they have a slow month, as long as I get get fired, like I'm yeah. still making your videos, whatever. And you actually don't care. Like the, you don't have to care if what you're yeah. doing is actually good or like, yep. they, now, I think most people prefer to be productive. Most people prefer to do yeah. a good job. Like most people do, Definitely. but like you could just not, you yeah. could just you be could like, just Meh. do what is required and not really show up at work. I get my pay and I don't care. I'm literally just thinking about like my strategy mm -hmm. for League of legends all day. Yeah. And I go and you're home like, and, Oh, well I get paid next Friday and then I get paid two Fridays after that. And here's what I make every month. And, but there's also limits to that. But I like, lo well, it doesn't growth. allow you to expand to the levels of your talent. And I think yep. like, that's what entrepreneurship is all about. Is like, if I can be good enough, I can do better. Mm, I like you, that. Like if I'm, if I can work hard enough, if I have the best idea, if I have the best value proposition to the market, I can win. Yep. If you don't own your own business, if you can kiss up to the boss enough or if you can do good enough work, but maybe not that it actually gets noticed, yeah. you know, there, it's, it's just way there's less. There's a of lot a, more like, variables there. Let's I mean, there's of a like lot a, of variables no matter what. Let's there's less of a linear path though. It's not like my efforts are rewarded. Yeah. You can work a job and your efforts are not rewarded and which is why people don't put as maximum effort in. And there's Definitely. a negative with that, which is, I don't think that's the best for you and your soul. Like I think everyone should like, people are happier when they're doing their best. Yeah. Um, but I also think the negative is like when I don't think if I work a job that I'm not like either in a leadership position of, or like maybe I'm owning a company Yeah. that keeps me up at night. Yeah. That wakes me up. There are well, times it's... where I go downstairs and work on a spreadsheet Yeah. because I cannot sleep. And my wife thinks I'm crazy for a while, <laughs> but, but especially like I remember during pandemic, borderline destroyed my mind really yeah yeah i would say like the the absolute terror of losing everything mm. yeah you know and that can There's just a lot up in the air during yep. that time and it like the then the two years because i was living in 2022 in 2020 i knew gotcha. what was going to happen to the market Mm. I knew the compression. I knew the crazy demand spike that was going to happen. I knew that by the time 2021 hit, the demand would be crazy and I would not be prepared because I lost the whole yeah. season of training. And like, I am living in that fear the second the economy shut down. I'm like, this is going to be the worst for two years. Mm. Uh, wedding film school it's going to destroy wedding film school i'm not going to be able to do what i wanted to do i just invested in this i want it to go well now it's screwed i'm like we're, we're picking up all this stuff with education now we're yeah. screwed i just invested yeah. in freaking huxley film and developing this brand and now we're screwed like every single thing about that it, it doesn't happen when it happened if you're a business owner it happens the second you think about it 
Yeah. Like the fear that you have owning this business is tangible and palpable. And yeah. if you don't like, and it can affect you, it can affect you physically. It can affect you mentally. Obviously it can affect you, the decisions you make. And then on the other side of it, two years later, you could say, wow, I am so glad that I prepared accordingly and I got through this and things are made great. most of the right say, decisions. Yeah. Or you could look back, unfortunately, and say, oh, my gosh, I thought this was going to be a whole terrible thing. And it wasn't. And I made all these decisions that were the wrong ones. And and I'm not saying that is the case that for you guys or for anybody or it isn't. But I'm just saying, like, you it eats away at your mind as a business. Owner. This is what I'll say. Do you remember the and end of uh, Avengers Endgame? I don't know. I can't keep any of those straight. Do you remember, you know, when Iron Man died? Is that the giant battle? Yeah, when Iron Man died. Uh, I'm not the best person to talk to about this. Well, Iron Man dies, if you didn't know. Okay. Spoiler Spoilers. alert! <laughs> Iron Man dies at the end of Avengers Endgame. Grabs the Infinity Gauntlet from Thanos, right? He doesn't know, and then he's like, I am Iron Man. <laughs> Uses the power. Then he dies. That's what a business that. is. Like, yeah. I use the Infinity Gauntlet to to survive my business at my personal expense. expense. Yeah. Like, like we did great and we grew a lot, but I, but I paid a price. Yeah, it, it takes it, a toll on you. It takes a and toll on you. And then in line with the current, sorry, my dog is sneezing. Good, good. Uh, and then, and then in line with the topic for today, it's like. Again, like what I was saying earlier, if you if you have multiple businesses, that's multiple streams that can take a toll on you for yes, any variety yes. of reasons. Because there are things like there are overarching things, pandemic, uh, you know, things like that 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 affect every business, right? For the oh most yeah, part. I mean, the good thing about any problem that you have is that there's actually no way to avoid the problem by doing any certain thing. Yeah, like like, but and then there's also like industry specific things. Sure, or but my point is like stress. Things. The things yeah. that people want to avoid are not usually specific. They're usually um, emotional and personal hardships. You know, Definitely. like, oh, my marriage or my mental health or my mm -hmm. physical health. Good. The yeah. good news for you is that owning a business is just one way to screw those things up. <laughs> There's a lot of ways to screw those things up. And so like by not doing more things or not owning a business, you're not actually you're not protecting. Protecting yourself from that. You are. Uh, this is why, like, I'm telling you the negatives. Because a lot of yeah. people are like, wow, you're so successful. You do so much, Jay. And I'm like, yeah, I do. You think that's interesting? Like, I've met people, uh, you know, in various, I will call them situations, circumstances, whatever. Business, personal, professional, uh, whatever, right? You meet people a variety of ways. And usually you get to talking about work and, uh, you know, I'll say what I do. And I, I'm not somebody who likes to talk about myself a whole lot. So they'll usually dig a little bit more and then it will kind of get to the point where I'm like, yeah, I own a production company and, and I also own an education platform. And then I, I have a co-working space in Minneapolis. And like, I think by that inherently people are like, oh my God, like, oh yeah, you, wow, look at you, like you're so, and it's like, wow. you're so successful. It's like, I don't feel that way. No, like, I don't. Like I do in some ways, but I don't think that inherently makes you successful. And I don't I like think, that. I think I'm okay saying that I'm successful because I just think, oh yeah, objectively, I have some yeah. success. I I'm I think I've had of... success, but I've also had failures. Like sure. everybody has. I well, don't know. I think... And also, why is the value of a business somehow more important than the value of your friendships or the value of your hobbies or the value of your physical health or the value of your relationships? Well, so, I'll tell like... you this. There's not there's a reason I still work at a church. Yeah. Because there are things that are more important to me than money. Mm. And I think everyone has to have those things. I'm not advocating for people being religious. I'm advocating yeah. for you to have transcendence something that's bigger than whatever it is that you see yeah right it has to be you mentioned community i'm big in community you mentioned yep. like I, family is huge um impact what am i doing and how is it impacting other people you know for me that's what the reason i do all the things i do is because i'm like well i believe in that well i believe in that well i believe in anything yeah. i believe in 
that it's I'm actually have one job in my whole life. <laughs> you just do things I believe in. I have a coherent yeah. worldview and everything I do supports my worldview. You know, in different ways, you know, and it's not about pushing my worldview on other people. Cause mm. you know, we, we're, we're not, it's not like I'm running a Christian wedding film company or yeah. <laughs> like, that's not what my goal is at all. But it's like my beliefs, whatever your beliefs are, should be um, supporting your actions. And I yeah. think a lot of people need to take a step back and say like, what impact do I want to make? And so for some people, they might go like, in order to make that impact, I need to have multiple businesses. Like for you, mm. fitness is a big deal. Yeah. You believe in that. It's your lifestyle. It's what you love. It's like what you do. You would do it for free. Some of it. Yep. Right? True. Yes. Why not make that part of your, how you make money? Right? Yeah. I, I well, think like that's think really that's what it comes to down it. to. It's like, what do you believe in? Like, yes. eh, eh, what you believe in is maybe not like always perfect, but like, that's a good way to think about it. And it's like, why did I do wedding filmmaking? Well, partially I kind of fell into it, but why did I do filmmaking? Because I love it. Yeah. I care about it. Yep. I think it's good. I think it's good for me. I think it's good for other people. Yeah. You like, I, you I even said, I believe in community, fitness. right? It's like, exactly. Weddings are connected to community, families, all yep. this positive stuff. It's, it's good vibes, yeah. you know, it's and, good vibes. That's really, what do I believe in? Good, good vibes. vibes. Good vibes. That's yeah. what your next company is going to be like <laughs> Bobby's margarita company. <laughs> Good vibes. <laughs> Good vibes, Coffee Co. Yeah, but it, coming I think, to a city near you. I will say this, and this is the last thing I'll get into. All right. Because I think like these are some of the negatives. There's a lot of negatives, and don't go in lightly. The other negatives yeah. are some people have terrible ideas. <laughs> mm, yep. <laughs> and, and I would really tell you, there's nothing wrong with having one job. And, oh yeah, yeah. We're not saying like. Oh, you want to be successful? You need multiple. No, businesses. or you're the more nope. cooler, betterest person, or some nope. crap, yeah. right? Like one of the things that I have seen more than people who are starting too many businesses, or I mean, more than people who are burnt out from all their businesses yeah, yeah. doing too well, are people who I'm like, why would you ever think that was going to do well? And yeah. that's a slippery slope because it's like, who am I to say that? But also, yes, but I, I think told there you is so. some amount of like. Part, I'm not saying don't ever try a business, but I think there is early on where you can say like, like the wilderness is a great example, honestly, Jay. Like, look, we understand co-working is a thing. Gyms are a thing, but there is nobody in our area. And now Lifetime Fitness has done something similar. They're testing it. There's nobody who really meshed those two together. And we have no idea if that's going to be well received. And some businesses, you kind of just got to jump into the deep end and see and some businesses, you can test the waters a little bit. It's maybe not as much up in front investment. Like a wedding video company, you could rent everything and say, do I like this? Do people like what I want to put together? Could this be a thing? You know, it's a relatively small investment of your time and some money and, you know, some learning. But like, yeah, I think you got to test those waters. Sometimes. You got to look and say, some... like, again, liability. What is the risk if this fails? Yes. Yep. What is the risk? What am I giving up? And am I willing to take that risk? Yep. Is that worth it to me? What is because the Because likely... on the flip side, what is the possibility? Like, what does it look like if it succeeds? Because I'll give you, let me give you three things. If you're considering starting a business, you have to be able to answer these questions. What is the risk if it fails? What is my exit strategy? Mm. How long am I willing to do this and not, not make, make money? money. Yeah. Like, yeah. Like, when will it make money? What is the profitability scenario? What is the roadmap to profit? Yeah. Um, my opinion is you should not have less than a three-year roadmap. Mm. Now it should pay for itself, or at least you know if you have people financing it or whatever. There, there's yeah. there are other ways to do it, but most people I think don't have anyone investing. They just have an idea. If you can't afford for it to be not profitable for three years, if the answer is like, well, what will happen if I fail? I'll lose my house. Okay. Mm. I, I don't know if that's worth it because most likely yeah. will fail. I think I remember reading somewhere like 90% of people who start a business fail. Maybe more. I, it might even be more. <laughs> I think it was more. I, 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 it was a huge number. It was like, whoa, yeah. that's crazy. Very sobering. You'll probably fail. You got to keep that in mind. Anything you start yeah. will probably fail. And by fail, I mean not be profitable. 
Like it yeah. might breaking even there's, is there's, not. Success. I mean, don't you think Jay? Like it's almost like so. Look, there's some wonderful ideas that should succeed, and for a variety of reasons, they do not. That could be a product, could be a service, whatever. And it's the same with wedding films. Like we've talked about this before. I've said this for years. There are some great filmmakers, some great photographers, and for some reason, those businesses just never reach their potential. They never really succeed. They never get profitable to where they could be full time. And there's tons of things we could never know about why. But like, just because you have a good idea, just because I'll tell you this, just because you have a good, I might know because I have more insight. I might know, mm. but mm. but like because I have outside perspective. True, it's really hard for you to know why yeah. everything failed, especially because, on the front end. Well, you if you knew, you wouldn't have done it that way. Yeah. So I I think I think it's like just know you're probably gonna fail, and so this is why the second question is what's the exit strategy? Well, the exit strategy is a big 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 thing, right? If you look yep. at it and go like, well, worst case scenario, if it fails, is I lose $10,000 or $20,000 mm-hmm. I'll never get back, but I can sell all the assets and I can aqu- get out of my debt yep. and I'll walk out with a licking my wounds, but I won't lose my house. Yep. So what's the, what is the worst case scenario and what's the exit strategy? Like, and not like, Oh, I'm going to sell my stuff. Oh, I'm going to buy all this like printer equipment. That was a stupid decision because the secondary market, it's garbage on that stuff and I can't sell it. Yeah. Nobody wants it. Like, and so now I'm stuck with it. Like I'm going to have to spend another thousand dollars to dispose of it. Right. And it's one of those things where like, that was a dumb decision. Now, given my worst case scenario was like, meh, worst, like my exit strategy is I'll figure it out later. I can afford $10,000. Yeah. Um, and that's, it's, but if, Say that was my only ten thousand dollars to start a secondary business. Yeah, I had ten thousand dollars. I had one shot. Well, it's opportunity cost then. Where, yes. Where else could it have gone? That's what a else waste. Could I have done with this. That was a waste of. That's a waste of money. And yep. and and like, it, I would say if you can't really think through like, if you can't endure any years of non profitability, if you don't know how you're going to get out of it, and you haven't even researched it, like at least go to eBay and see how much this stuff is selling for. And yeah. like, yeah. And also like, make okay, sure well, you, I'll take a 20% hit. Make sure you research recently sold. Don't just yeah. look at what it's ever sold for. <laughs> and it's like, for sure. like you, I promise you, you could find a Canon Mark D two, five D Mark two that sold for $1,500 and you're not going to sell yeah. them for that now. Yeah. And I think the last <laughs> thing is like assessing the risk. And if you look at all three and you're like, I can deal with the risk. I can get out of it if I have to. And yeah. you know what? I'm willing. I love this enough. I'm good enough at it. And I believe in it enough that I'm willing to work on it even before yeah. I see the return. Go for it. Then I, yeah, I think you go for it. And I think you look, there are a lot of, like we said, there are a lot of positives of this too. It's great. Um, I think you go for it. I think you be intentional with it. I think you protect yourself in, in a variety of ways. You know what I would do if I was just a solo guy? Mm. If I was a solo wedding filmmaker, I would open a coffee shop with breakfast. That's I would get what a, I want to do. Jay, would, giving away my ideas. Yep, Jay's coffee. <laughs> no, I want to make egg sandwiches, man. I want to make freaking egg sandwiches. That's what I want to make. Just breakfast sandwiches, oh, good coffee. We could start that business. <laughs> Should we do – what's the middle for us? Like uh, like, uh, like, like uh, what would that Ugh. be? You know, Indiana? Kill me. No. <laughs> right in between us. Let's do it. Uh, Indianapolis is quite literally the most boring city I've ever... <laughs> I used to have to go to a All car. right. We'll open one in uh, Boston. If you live in Indianapolis, I'm sorry. I used to go to a conference there once a year for marketing for hardware stores. <laughs> well, there, that's your mistake right there, Jay. And it I, I can tell you right off the bat, that's not going to be very fun. It literally, like... like I would stay right in downtown, and if you didn't get some food before nine o'clock, you ain't eating. <laughs> like, like, and that's why he loves egg sandwiches because he couldn't wait till he woke up and ate an egg sandwich. I and there love you go. egg sandwiches, <laughs> but like, regardless, it's like I like I would start a business that was open from like nine a eight a.m. to like three p.m. Yep, I would probably only be open th- Tuesday through Friday. Yep. And I would use the uh, the re- the space I owned to edit my films in. Yeah. 
and like I would I would try to double dip, you know, make totally. money. Like I'm always thinking anything I buy, I want it to make money as many ways as possible. And so like, yeah, I would do that for sure. It's like, I, I, I couldn't help myself. I could never do, yeah. I could never do one thing. Every time I buy something, I'm like, this, this hard drive just what sitting here, do with this? this hard yeah. drive just sitting here, not making me any money. This hard drive <laughs> making me money. It's like, so I think like, that's me. Um, and I think more wedding filmmakers should be, when I hear people talking about wanting to do less work all the time, I actually think mm. it's the total opposite. I think more people should be doing more things they just would be happy. differentiate a little bit. Yes, better. for sure. And yeah. like spread, create multiple streams of income. Oh, I just, I think that's just a really interesting like concept or thought. And I think it kind of goes against the grain. Um, and I think I've probably said maybe not the opposite, but something that's not totally aligned with that at times. But I, I think I kind of agree with that too. Like, or I guess I would say, I think that you should try it. Try working differently. Def- try. Yes try something new i i agree that i don't think it necessarily is that you're overworked i think burnout is different than being overworked i think a lot of people confuse the two and i think uh setting your mind setting your brain to something else even if it's still work it's different work i think that can kind of solve that change of pace break the rust off just like uh, even if it's like and then come back refreshed even if like you're like um like wedding filmmaking is my main thing but like yeah. I do a little like, you know, I know a guy who used to like have a YouTube, you know, he had a TikTok channel of opening baseball cards and then he it. would sell these baseball card packs on eBay. Yeah. And it's like that eventually became his full time job. Yeah. But he started it. Don't you think a lot, especially like kind of I don't want to call that like a new industry because baseball cards aren't new, but maybe doing it on TikTok is more new. Right. But like a lot of stuff like that, it starts as on something on the side and very small. And it's because you're passionate about it and mm-hmm. you keep doing it for three years until you're starting to make money off of it because you like it. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, you, the, your passion could become your side biz or your full biz. Yep. You never know. Totally. There are people who wedding filmmaking might become their side hustle and woodworking because becomes their else. main business. Yeah. You know what I noticed the other day? And then uh, there's a channel, um, Alvin Zhao or something. He, he he's, yeah. a, he's a, he makes food. And it's yeah. all like this, like he'd like 24 hour, 48 hour chocolate cookies and 400 Sweet. hour, like, 400 but it's like he, he's always has numbers. <laughs> right. And it's yeah, like, yeah. it's, it's yeah. really over the top recipes and he's okay. like very humble kitchen, but it's filmed so good. Mm. It's beautiful. It's like, uh, and he cares about it. He probably loves doing okay, it. Okay. Here's the deal. He did it for years. And I think he just like made, he, you know, he had millions of plays on his videos. So he probably made some good, yeah. good money, but yeah. I, that wasn't his job. I don't believe he must've worked yeah. in the culinary industry. Um, now I noticed recently there's, you ever seen uh, base, uh binging with Babish, the yes. Babish. Okay. I noticed this new series popping up called um, anime with Alvin. Okay. And he makes food from animes. And oh, I'm like, cool. And I'm like, I know this guy. Yeah. That's the guy who I used to watch on that other YouTube oh, channel. Oh, interesting. Okay. And, and now he, I don't know what happened, how he joined the channel. Like, I'm assuming he's making money yeah. now and he's working oh, sure, full time yeah. for, for, for Babish on that, the Babish culinary universe in that universe. Yeah, yeah. And it's like, you don't know, you know, yeah. what the thing you're doing, treat, treat your passion like a job. And and I, and I and I I it gets treated so negatively to be like oh a job a job, it's like yeah no treat it like well, a job. Well, I will say I think seriously. there's one caveat to that Jay, which is always protect what you care about. Sure, because it is easy to turn something into a job and then hate it. Well, and that to me a job doesn't fine. mean to me a job doesn't mean um, you do something f- for making money. But to mm. me, when I say a job is, I do it in a disciplined way. I like that. Like, not just when I show up and do it. Like, I don't think most things that there's a lot of things you can do whenever you feel like video games are not a job. I play video games only when I feel like it. If I don't play video games for three weeks, it's because I didn't want to do it. If I play video games for the next three days, it's because I felt like doing it. That's not a, I'm not saying treat that like a job. Yeah. 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 I'm saying like, take the thing that you're like, I see some potential in here and I love it. Mm. Like I love doing this and I see potential. 
try treating that like a job for a while where you do it. Yeah. Hey, I'm going to do one video a week on YouTube. I'm going to do two hours a day of woodworking. I'm going to see what comes of it. I'm going to put something on Etsy. Like that's a way to ease into a business. We talked a lot about like high risk business investments. You buy yeah. a bunch of products. There's a lot of low risk. You get a too. lease. You do all these things. You could just do things that you love, that you're passionate yeah. about. You could, on the side, go shoot. Your I sick. think you're doing I a think wedding. That's how a lot of weddings filmmakers start. Yes, 100. Yeah. percent That's how you started as a wedding filmmaker. So like you could say, I'm going to go to five local businesses mm -hmm. every week in a disciplined way. I love shooting. I'm going to shoot pieces for these people for ten straight yeah. weeks until yep. I gener and I'm gonna make 10 videos and I'm gonna treat it like a job. So I'm not gonna shoot them. And then when I feel like it, edit them. Yeah. No, yeah. don't freaking do that. You just wasted your whole yeah. day shooting. Shoot it and edit it, get it freaking done. Put it out into the world, see what happens. Yeah. You might have another business or another line of business. Or another revenue stream or whatnot. Yeah, um, so. I yeah. love that. Me I too. think. I think that's a good point to end, Jay. We're, I think we're, what, over an hour now? And we're I'm, over. This show so sucks bad. now. This show's <laughs> terrible. It's it's decaying before our eyes. <laughs> yeah. But uh, but I think this was a very solid, I know we went kind of all over the board. We definitely went down some rabbit holes and tangents, but I think it all kind of circles back to what we were talking about and, and what it's like. And I think it's just, I think it's just us being real about what it's like with multiple businesses and stuff. And so, I, I'm hoping people find this helpful. I think there are a lot of people with multiple businesses. And I think there are a lot of people who know that when the right idea comes along, they anticipate trying another business. Or, you know, yeah, I would say you well, should try so. to do it. You should be okay with failure. Yep. You should just make sure and you don't plan accordingly. Don't lose your house. That would be good. Yeah. Um, yeah. And I guess if you want to take that risk, by the way, like I'm not opposed to you putting your house up and maybe you do yeah. lose your house. But, you know, I mean, that's just, I don't have that risk tolerance personally, but yeah, I don't either, but like, but. but regardless, you know, I would love to see more filmmakers who are just using the fact that they actually only have like 30 weeks of work a year. Yeah. Maximum as a wedding filmmaker to be realistic and say, I got 20 weeks. I got 10 weeks. What can I do with it? Yeah. Can I love imp it. improve my lifestyle? So we would love that. We think wedding filmmaking is a great career for a lot of reasons, and this is one of them. It lets you to do lots of different things. So if you like this podcast and you like learning about wedding filmmaking, if you like this industry like we do, we love the wedding industry. This is one of the reasons we love it because it affords us- We love us, you, wedding industry. It's the best. It affords us this privilege to spend our time podcasting or starting gyms or doing all these extra things that we love. Just the two things most wedding videographers do. <laughs> yes, yes. I think most of us do have podcasts probably, <laughs> but- <laughs> <laughs> but regardless, it's great. And if you like that, give us five stars. Check out um, our channels, Wedding Film School and The Wedding Film School Show on YouTube. And of yes, course, please. leave us a review. It helps us a lot. If Hopefully you've had a great time listening to this and you're going to be here next week for The Wedding Film School Show. See you guys. Heck yeah.